Louisiana was one of the first states to allow offshore oil drilling, you know, in the 1940s. Well, since then, they've, play, they've installed over 4,000 rigs in the northern Gulf of Mexico. And, cre and as such, they created the world's largest chain of artificial reefs. And by installing a platform in an area, what you do is you give a reef another chance to um, take hold and for fish to live around those platforms. So in South Louisiana, one of our favorite places to go fishing is around the offshore structures. I moved down to South Louisiana to go to Nichols, finish up my marine, marine biology degree at Nichols State University, and to work here at LumCon if possible one day. Well, when I um, first came down here, I got a job as a, um, a scuba diving biologist for an oyster biologist, where I would take uh, square meter samples and we would do population studies. So um, that's what drew me here in the beginning. And as a scuba diving biologist, you know, I heard that there were corals on these platforms. I said, yeah, sure there are. There's no corals below Louisiana. You know, they don't have reefs down here. But, you know, I, my friends started taking me out on their boats and they'd take me to these platforms and I'd see a platform covered with coral. I equate it to Alice in Wonderland. As soon as I dive over the side of the boat, I'm going through the rabbit hole. And there, these platforms are just covered with coral that look like sunflowers. And it's covering the platform, so you're going down and diving on basically um, an underwater flower bed with unique organisms that are swimming around from an inch long to five, six, seven, eight feet long swimming by you. So I mean, it's just an, an amazing ecosystem that lives around these platforms. And when I started diving that, then I was hooked. I mean, it, it was my favorite thing to do. I couldn't think of anything else that I wanted to do other than go out on these platforms and look for stuff. You know, because it was an amazing world that nobody's really studied down here. Nobody's definitely nobody's written about the types of reefs that are there. And I found sea cowries on these platforms, um, lobster, um, puffer fish, uh, wrasses, queen angels. I mean, um, it's just, you, you know, just all types of Caribbean organisms that I didn't expect to see here in the northern Gulf of Mexico Louisiana, below Louisiana. And there it is right there underneath these platforms and it's it really is to me it's Alice in Wonderland you know because it's it's an amazing adventure every time we dive there. The, the things that you can come across out here from manta rays to whale sharks you know we have sperm whale in the Gulf of Mexico we have killer whales in the Gulf of Mexico and all of this exists right around those platforms. Then there's the time that we found the uh, Tabastria micranthus. You know, I'm diving down and we're looking for new stuff and I got my buddy and we're harvesting these corals and I look over there and there's this tall black stalk of something. I said, what in the world is that? So I swam over there to it and this thing was about this high in the water and it looked like a corn stalk just budded all the way up. And then um, came back with it later and started looking and found out that this thing has never existed in the literature before. They've never seen it in this area. It's called green sun polyps, and, um, and they're originally from Indonesia. And we found them in 2006, the first time it's ever been found in the whole Atlantic Basin, from New York to uh, Brazil, and from the Mediterranean to the Gulf of Mexico. It's never been seen in this part of the world before. And these are beautiful coral that live underneath the platforms, you know, um, offshore platforms in these certain areas. We took Jeff Corwin out on uh, May 20, 2010, put him underneath this structure, and he looked up at this rusting thing, and he says, that's just the ugliest thing I've ever seen. He went overboard with my camera and my mask and my gear, scuba gear, and he came back up and thought it was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. He said he could not believe the amount of life that's under there. And so really, that's what, if, if there was a message I would try to get out, I'd say that, you know, we don't have to remove these platforms at the end of the life of the well. As a matter of fact, we're better off not removing them. And for a lot of reasons. Number one, the coral reef that's underneath them is an amazing habitat. So why not leave it there until it's structurally unsound and it has to be removed? Um, the fish that live there, you, if you remove that platform, you're taking their house away from them. And furthermore, these rig legs are moored to the bottom. You can put oil sensors on each one of those legs and find out if that well ever leaks. Even though it's plug and abandoned, it might still leak one day. Well, you put sensors on it and you can tell if it's your well that's leaking there or if oil's coming in from another direction. And you do this with 
the, all the platforms that are good candidates for leaving them out there as, the, um, as an ecological reef zone. We should be saving a lot of these. Maybe not all of them, but the discussion needs to be had that you know, these things represent an amazing ecosystem, an amazing um, biomass of, of living organisms from uh, commercial quality red snapper, amberjack, cobia, um, pompano, um, albacore. These are all sushi quality fish and they're, they're harvested right off of these platforms.